Hi, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Puzzle. And today, today I'm gonna take care about this amazing assembly kit. At least I expect it to be amazing. This thing is seriously heavy. It's a huge box and it's an assembly kit, a full metal assembly kit of a four cylinder Ferrari engine. And I really can't wait to try it. If you like what you see today, of course, hit the like button. I also just want to mention that this is not a paid promotion or something. Still, I will place somewhere around a little mark that it is a commercial to prevent any misunderstandings. And if you are interested to buy this product, of course, I will put your link in the video description. So let's just check it out. I will just open this box and as I said, it's massive. 357 parts. Here's an instruction and the first positive point I notice is the instruction is completely in English. So let's see and wow, look at this. Look at this. This is seriously, everything is made out of metal. Anodized aluminium in this case, I think. Feels insane. And let's see how many parts are hidden beneath here. Wow, and more parts. Look at the camshafts. Man, this is insane. And here we come to the big parts. The block, even here with some bushings where the pistons are running. The cylinder head. Wow. And here, look at this, all the screws I need. So up to now, I can only tell you, I'm blown away by all these details and how well these parts are actually made. So I would propose, I will just get it on, have a look in the assembly instruction and start with the assembly. Here we go, all four cylinders are ready. And by the way, this is the ideal, from my point of view, the ideal assembly kit for someone who is interested in anything about technic or mechanical design or whatever. This is so much enjoyable. I can tell you after only assembling here these few parts. And I can tell you already now, this is so enjoyable. This is just insane. Let's continue with the next step, which is to assemble this assembly here into the engine block. So let's get this huge part over here. Wow. So we orientate them like so, as stated on the manual. And then we're gonna insert them. And here we go. And I just got myself a little bit of additional grease, which is easier for me to apply because it's in a syringe. This is much cleaner and easier for me to do. So here we go. And here you can see the engine already rotating and the cylinders moving up and down. Next step is the cylinder head and installing the spark plugs into the cylinder head. Man, this is so cool. And the spark plugs are used to ignite the fuel after it was compressed by the piston. Release the energy, transfer it into the crankshaft and then on the road. Now the valves, and the valves get pretty complicated because for the valves we need the valves themselves of course, the valve springs, the valve caps and the valve covers. Okay, here we go. Fully assembled with all the springs, spark plugs, caps and so on. 
Next step is to mount the cam C. And now it's gonna get interesting because now we are installing the camshafts. And what is the job of the camshafts? The camshafts are controlling the valves, the movement of the valves. Means the camshafts are located here. They are rotating and they are pushing with these features onto the walls and open and close them at a certain moment. Makes sense later, I promise you. If you are not familiar with engines, everything will make sense later and you will perfectly understand how this engine works. For now, let's add some grease to the camshafts and then let's get them inside. Okay, now the exhaust pipes, where are they? Whew, it's done now and now you can see here how the camshafts are driving the walls up here. And you can see how these walls make these slight moves. Now, now it's time to join engine body. Here we go. We're gonna equip this with four legs for display reasons. And I know that a lot of people are claiming quality or low quality of products that are coming out of China. There are definitely also high quality products coming out of China and I consider this one here also definitely a high quality product. There's nothing, I can find nothing cheap in here in this box and so far I can tell you it's definitely worth the money. And now let's assemble the engine body. And another nice detail that shows you that the manufacturer taking cares about the assembly experience. You will be not able to tighten this screw with the normal Allen wrench. You only can use this shortened one to tighten it. And they deliver this extra as an extra part only to tighten this single screw it seems. And here we go. Now look at this monster, huh? Wow. And it's gonna get even better if we continue. So let's go. So now I need to align the timing points between the camshaft and the crankshaft. You can see this little mark here and this need to be aligned with this dot over here. So, And I need to do the same up here that these two points are exactly facing each other. This one and that one. Like so. Once this is done, I can continue installing the chain. Believe it or not, this is not a plastic chain or something. This is a full metal chain that comes with it can't believe it it's, it's 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 quality is so superb it's insane really it's insane so getting the chain up here on the wheel on the two gears here we go chain is installed now last but not least we're gonna install the crankshaft pulley next comes the oil filter yes it comes with an oil filter at least the oil filter dummy a black box attached over here and then i'm gonna install the belt, the belt comes over here. Connecting the generator, the crankshaft, and 
the starter motor. Yes. And to tension it, I can now use this feature over here, if you remember. And if I screw this in, you can see this wheel moves inwards, pressing against the belt and get it under more tension. Okay? So this was the intention of this feature here, the belt tensioner. And that's it, I think that's it already. And can you imagine even the battery mounting frame here comes in full metal. The circuit board comes next. <laughs> yes, guys, believe it or not, this this monster of an assembly kit comes also with a circuit board. And the circuit board goes over here. I hope I did everything right because um, as you can see, there are a lot of screws here left, actually. <laughs> Not sure if I forgot them or I think it's charging right now. But now let's see if it works out as we all expect and will start to twist. I hope I can't. Not sure if I can clamp my fingers here, therefore I will just hold it down here and let's see what happens if I start it. Oh, it's fighting. Here we go, it's running. Not sure if the battery is still weak or if there's any hard point it need to pass. You can see it's not twisting continuously. You can hear this? But I think I will find out where this is coming from. Maybe add some grease here. Okay, getting better already. Okay, sounds much better now. And one thing I'm gonna try is I'm gonna loosen. Maybe the two gears are not perfectly cylindrical, causing this uneven. So we do a little bit of failure analysis here. If I lose the screws here, start a motor, and here it's gone. If I press it, you can see the mo movement of the motor and how it moves. If I press it here, you can see how the motor moves. That means this big flywheel is not perfectly circular. What I'm gonna do now is, um, since I have some of these super small washers here left, I will take them, place them down here and a starter motor to increase the distance between this big flywheel and this little gear here. So I will increase the distance a little bit, which compensates probably this non-circular shape, not perfectly circular shape of this flywheel. So short service, and now let's see if it works better, if it performs as we expect. So service done. Let's see if it performs as we expect. And here we go. Yeah. So how does this basically work? Um, let me explain it like this. Very, very basic. Okay, so you have the cylinder where the piston goes up and down. So at the first stroke, when it goes down, there is a mixture of air and fuel inside of the cylinder. Very fine fuel vapor with air. When it goes down, it mixes. And when it comes up again, like so, when it comes up again, it compresses the mixture of fuel and air to a very small volume. So it gets compressed very much to a very tiny space and then the spark plug ignites the mixture with a little spark. The mixture immediately gonna explode, push down the piston again, the third stroke, releases most of its energy, the piston, and when the piston comes up again, it pushes the gas out to the other side. And this is controlled, and the intake and the outlet is controlled by the camshaft up here, okay? So, and this is why the camshaft always needs to be exactly synchronized to the piston going up and down. Because if it would be out of sync, nothing would happen anymore. The movement of the piston will go down here to the crankshaft. It, the crankshaft will start rotating, transferring the energy released by the gas, or this little explosion inside, through the shaft. And the crankshaft will transfer the energy towards the clutch and gearbox and to the wheels. And a small part of it is used in the others, on the other side over here to rotate this wheel, transfer this little amount of energy through the belt 
into the generator, which powers all the electricity in the car. In addition, it will power the water pump over here to cool your complete engine and keep the temperature at a level that it does not destroy itself. And in addition, and most important, behind here it's connected to the chain to synchronize the movement of the camshaft, and therefore it's not a belt but a chain because it needs to be exactly right, to synchronize the movement of the crankshaft down here with the camshafts, the two camshafts up here, which control the intake and outlet valves exactly at the right time. I hope you understood this explanation. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. I will put your link in the video description to sterlingkit.com where I got this assembly kit from. I hope you like what you've seen. If yes, drop a comment, leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And until next time, keep on puzzling.